Howdy, 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 and welcome to Exploring Metal with Ryan Acid Heads Murphy. This episode, we're going to be talking about the other 80s metal, Faster and Darker. The stuff you don't realize was actually around during the 80s as well, because the 80s was dominated by hair metal. And of course, hair metal, we're talking about Motley Crue, Bon Jovi... Uh, let me see, let me get my playlist up over here. Um, let's see. So I said Motley Crue, Bon Jovi, Poison. Uh, towards the end of the 80s, you get Guns N' Roses, who was kind of a bridge between hair metal and what would become kind of the 90s grunge and hard, heavy metal and hard rock styles. Uh, let me see here. Of course, you've got Ozzy around in the 80s doing his thing. And kind of... You know, Ozzy is his own style of heavy metal, almost. He's not hair metal, but he's not real dark. He's not real fast. He's, he's heavy metal. He's continuing in the vein of the stuff that was established throughout the 70s, and then all through the 80s as well. You know, he, Ozzy in the 80s is metal. Just classic heavy metal. Uh, let's see. Is there anybody else I want to mention before we move on and get into the meat of this? I can't think of any of the others. You know, there were a lot of hair metal groups around. That's not the point of this one. But that is what people, when people think of the 80s, especially 80s metal, that's what they think of. A lot of people aren't aware that there was a hell of a lot of other stuff going on in the 80s. For example, Metallica started in the 80s. And they were a thrash metal band. You also have Anthrax. And Slayer. And loads of other bands as well, but, uh, you know, I'm just trying to stick to the standouts. So you got Slayer, Metallica, and Anthrax. All bands that kind of established true thrash metal, which is playing as fast as you possibly can. That's what thrash is all about. There's a lot of other uh, things that go into thrash metal. There's, it's a, about a lot of driving rhythms. Uh, solos are still there, but very fast. But that's where you start getting into the the school of heavy metal that's all about going fast. All of, you know, the shreddy guitar solos and just playing super, super fast and hard. So Metallica, you've got their entire first album, but I'd go with Whiplash as a good one. Uh, if you want to really get it, uh, understand thrash metal, Metallica's first couple, three albums would be the best ones. You Slayer, Hella Waits, Raining Blood, Angel of Death, the classics from them. And then, of course, Anthrax, Metal Thrashing Mad would be my go-to for them, just to get an idea of, you know, the overall thrash genre. So that was all going on in the 80s. Thrash Metal. Play as fast and hard as possible. That was going on here in the United States. That was kind of the thing that developed here. It was all about fast. Fast, 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 fast. Then you also have groups like Venom, who were thrash, but at the same time, very, very dark. And between groups like Merciful Fate, Venom, King Diamond, who is the lead vocalist of Merciful Fate, but also did a solo stuff. As well as, there were other bands as well, but again, I'm sticking to some of the more standouts. 
you know, Merciful Fate, King Diamond, Venom, you also start seeing that kind of thrash, but also the emergence of black metal, which was kind of a European, what was going on in Europe was leaning more towards black metal and extreme metal. And you're starting to see the emergence in the 80s of death metal, as well as industrial metal. So the whole thing with black metal, extreme metal... Extreme metal is diverse. It's mostly characterized by just being very extreme and out there. But black metal is all about... Again, it's kind of going back to Black Sabbath. But in a different way. I mean, it's really pushing just trying to be as dark and evil and demonic sounding as possible. This is where... You know, in the 80s and into the 90s, you end up with the, the first wave of black metal who was uh, people who were very heavily into Satanism. And you get murders and church burnings and all kinds of crazy shit that went on with black metal. Which isn't something you can blame on the music. The music was a product of the people, and all that other stuff was too. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the music, necessarily. But that's where you start getting that establishment of groups like Immortal and Emperor and some of the other really big names in black metal. And it, that kind of starts a bit earlier with Merciful Fate and Black King Diamond. Now, King Diamond, Merciful Fate kind of have elements of black metal to them. Again, we're talking earlier. Venom heavily influential on black metal. But Merciful Fate and King Diamond also stand out as being very story-based. King Diamond, I think, is probably the first one to ever do a complete concept album in heavy metal. You know, other groups did that, like Pink Floyd would do entire concept albums. But I think it was probably King Diamond was the first one to do it with heavy metal. I'm not 100% sure. It may have been one of the power metal groups like um, uh, that Iron Maiden or one of those groups may have done it first, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I think it was probably King Diamond with uh, Abigail. And even a little bit before that with Merciful Fate and uh, Melissa, I think was the album. I can't remember 100% on that. Let me look at... Where are you? There you are. Merciful Fade. Yeah, Melissa. So, you want to start getting into some of the more darker aspects of heavy metal. Again, you should be doing all the other stuff and listening to all the earlier stuff first and then building up towards this direction. Go with thrash metal first and understand thrash metal. Okay, again, that's Metallica, Anthrax, and... Uh, da, 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 Slayer. With Slayer and Venom, again, you can also check out Venom. Slayer and Venom is where you're going to start seeing the, the going into really, really dark subject matter. Uh, Slayer did an entire album about the Holocaust, for example. Against it, obviously. Unfortunately, Heavy Metal has a reputation for attracting some of the less savory elements of society, which is true, but it's not the fault of the music. You know, Hitler loved classical music, particularly Wagner. Of course, Wagner was incredibly anti-Semitic, so... It is what it is. It's not like heavy metal has some sort of monopoly on assholes. You'll find plenty of those in other that listen to other genres of music as well. The point is that with groups like Slayer and Venom is where you really start seeing a, the exploration of really, really dark subject matter. And that kind of influences 
the black metal of the later 80s and into the 90s, where, you again, you start getting into the really devil-worshipping Satanism and all that stuff, which is uh, Northern Europe is where a lot of that stuff kind of came from. And with, again, Merciful Fate, uh, a lot more theatric and storytelling based, but also dark, very dark stories, but some very good music as well. I mean, if you're going to check out any of these bands, you don't want to go in for the really crazy out there stuff, Merciful Fate and King Diamond are some really good ones to check out, because uh, especially King Diamond, most of his albums tell some sort of story. Okay, so if you're going to check out any of the kind of the European darker metal stuff, go with King Diamond, and then you can check out Merciful Fate if you feel like it later on. Merciful Fate put out some really great stuff. So, with uh, recommendations for this era of music, I'm going to say, again, Slayer, Hello Waits, uh, Angel of Death, Raining Blood. These are those are kind of the the three classic Slayer songs. Metallica, you want like Whiplash and let me see here. Uh, where are you? Da, 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 there we go. Uh, if you want to check out some of the musicianship definitely check out their instrumentals. Uh, Anesthesia, Pulling Teeth, Orion, Orion. Uh, I believe it's To Live Is To Die. Ride the Lightnings is The Call of Cthulhu. But music-wise, again, uh, you want to talk about earlier stuff, go with Whiplash, uh, Master of Puppets, uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls is a good one for some of their slower ones, uh, Blackened, Injustice for All, basically the entire Injustice for All album is great, um, except for its noticeable lack of uh, bass, which is kind of a, not so sure you'd consider it a joke. But, you know, that's some Metallica you can check out for Anthrax. I'm not really big into Anthrax, so I'd say, uh, Metal Thrashing Mad, but they're early albums. You can also check out their, uh, Anthrax was very influential in their own way, because not only were they one of the pioneers of thrash metal, uh, they also were pretty much the first group to ever mix rap and heavy metal. So, definitely should check out some Anthrax for those reasons. Uh, Venom, Welcome to Hell is a good one to check out. Then, uh, um, Merciful Fate, I'd say uh, Gypsy is a really good one. Into the Coven is a good one. The Uninvited Guest. Uh, let's see. Egypt, the Bell Witch. So yeah, those are some Merciful Fate songs that you can check out that are really good. Let me see about King Diamond here. I can try to rattle off some off the top of my head, but it's easier if I just look it up right quick. Some uh, Black Horseman, Eye of the Witch, No Presents for Christmas, Black Hills Sanitarium, uh, Halloween is a really good one. Uh, let's see, Black Horseman. There's another really good one on... The Abigail album. The Abigail album is pretty damn good. Black Horseman is my favorite song off that album. As well as... Let me get to my K's up here. A Mansion in Darkness would be the other one. 
A Mansion in Darkness and Black Horseman from Abigail. You can also just pick up the Deadly Lullabies Live is the one that I usually listen to. You know, that's got a lot of really good stuff on it. Welcome Home is a good one. So yeah, Deadly Lullabies Live is a, a good one to check out for King Diamond. Okay, so that kind of brings us through the 80s. And s there was a lot of stuff going on in the 80s, obviously. But as far as heavy metal goes, that's where there was a lot of significant branching in the genre. That's why I did two videos just pretty much for the 80s. And, you know, the late 70s and into the 80s. So in the last one, I'm going to start getting into kind of the 90s and where heavy metal has gone and where it's... I'm not going to try to speculate on where it's going. I'm just going to give you some more recommendations. Kind of where things have branched out from even further and some of the stuff that I like. I'm just going to... You know, that's what the last video is going to be mostly is recommendation... Pardon me. Recommendations of stuff that is a bit newer that I happen to enjoy. As well as kind of going through the 90s and, you know, heavy metal from the 90s and where it kind of branched out even further in there. So thanks very much for listening, and I'll see you on